Aloha, and welcome to another edition of the NAACP Today Show. Thank you for joining us this evening. You know, as we're about to turn the corner on the calendar here in this period of reflection of the contribution of minorities in this nation, today we're going to pause and recognize one of the community organizations that has helped us in a way to perpetuate the legacy of the great Buffalo Soldiers. We have as our guest today, Lawrence Johnson. He is the president of the Buffalo Soldiers Motorcycle Club of the chapter here in Hawaii. So please join me in welcoming him to the show today. We have quite an informative discussion that we're about to engage, and hopefully you will learn more about the organization, but more so, you will be more informed about the history of this great group of individuals who made substantial contributions to this great democracy. So, Lawrence, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Alfonso. All right. I appreciate you coming on, and we look forward to this and other opportunities to engage. So let me begin by asking a couple of questions. Um, when did the Motorcycle Club for the Buffalo Soldiers begin? Well, the first chapter was started in Chicago, Illinois, um, by Ken Thomas, who mm -hmm. is a retired police officer, uh, and that was in 1999. Okay, so it's a fairly young group then. Yes. Oh, okay. All right, and um, what is the association then between motorcycles and the horse, uh, horses from the original Buffalo Soldiers? Well, the original Buffalo Soldiers, the cavalry Buffalo Soldiers, of course, mm -hmm. rode horses, and mm -hmm. we refer to our motorcycles as Iron Horse. Okay. So that's the association. Oh, okay. Um, why motorcycles or, or why start this group given that there are a number of motorcycle clubs across the nation that guys could have joined or women or whomever? Right. Well, the Buffalo Soldiers uh, Motorcycle Club was started because although there are a lot of motorcycle clubs, um, we have a camaraderie of uniformed and civilian members who have an affection for large motorcycles. Mm -hmm. So when we put those elements together, the motorcycle club was the best route to use to promote the legacy of the Buffalo Soldiers. Okay, and the, the symbolic of large being the, the fact that it was a horse and not somebody that may have a pet or something of that nature. Correct, right. Okay, all right. Uh, are there specific parameters in order for a person to have uh, with respect to their bike in order to be a part of the club? Well, of course, the bike has to be legal, legally mm -hmm. registered. Um, you have to know how to ride it. Um, mm -hmm. It can't be a moped. It has to be an actual motorcycle, mm -hmm. um, you know, capable of sustaining a certain speed, highway speeds, um, mm -hmm. and, of course, be legal to ride, registered, mm -hmm. insured, uh, and um, have the uh, appropriate license to operate that vehicle. Mm -hmm. What about, um, is there a safety requirements in, in the sense that some organizations require certain safety uh, classes that you go through in order to be a part of it? Is that a condition of membership? Uh, it is members? not a condition of membership, okay. although uh, most of the uh, active duty soldiers that are members mm -hmm. are required by the military to mm -hmm. go through the course, um, and for everyone else it's optional, although it's preferred. Oh, okay. Um, when did the Hawaii chapter then start? Uh, the Hawaii chapter started in August of 2006. Oh, wow. Relatively soon also. And, and was there um, a story behind starting a chapter here in Hawaii? Well, I originally started a chapter in Augusta, Georgia in 2001. Mm -hmm. um, but in 2003, I relocated to Hawaii for employment purposes and rode around for um, maybe two or three more years and um, finally asked the National for permission to start a chapter in Hawaii because there was an interest. Uh, I would ride around with my Buffalo Soldiers colors on my back mm -hmm. and I was often asked if there's a club or if there's going to be a club started. Um, initially I kind of hesitated um, mm -hmm. but when I uh, felt my way around the motorcycle set here in Hawaii and in Honolulu specifically, um, finally I was asked by uh, the National to start one and I agreed that it's time. Mm -hmm. So uh, we started up a chapter here. 
All right. Um, so how many members roughly is in your club uh, here in Hawaii? Well, we have 14 full members, uh, 16 full members, mm -hmm. um, but if you include the associate members, um, mm -hmm. we have approximately 26 members, uh, counting the associate members. The full members are the actual motorcycle riders. Right. And, um, but in associate members, any member, significant other, it could be a you know, spouse, uh, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, even mm -hmm. uh, someone's uh, kids. Okay. Um, if they have something uh, significant to contribute to the club, then they can be offered uh, associate membership. Oh, okay. And an associate member is sponsored by a full member. For example, my wife, who's here in the studio, is an mm -hmm. associate member. Okay. Of the motorcycle club. All right. Well, that's that's good to know because a lot of times organizations don't give an opportunity for partners or for friends or family, uh, significant uh, members of the family or that member to be a part of what's important to them. Correct. And so I think that that speaks volumes about the organization's ability to reach out and make sure that they're embracing uh, folks. So is this a public or a private organization? Well, we're a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. um, it's not publicly owned, mm -hmm. um, but we are a nonprofit organization. Oh, okay. And, and the, in order to join it, they just contact you guys and say, hey, I want to join your motorcycle. And you explained other, earlier some of the conditions of right. membership. Correct. We, we don't recruit folks to join. Okay. Someone has to have a, a, a true interest mm -hmm. um, and want to join based on their interest in promoting the legacy of Buffalo Soldiers. Okay. All right. Now, uh, with respect to the, the local chapter here in Hawaii, mm -hmm. and obviously it's a national organization, how is, it, is that structured with respect to the hierarchy? Well, we have a president, which is myself. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also the founder mm -hmm. for the uh, for the club. Uh, we have a vice president, secretary, and treasurer. Mm -hmm. But we also have appointed pos those four positions I just named are elected positions, mm -hmm. or uh, we're elected officers. But we also have appointed uh, positions, which are road captain, who's mm -hmm. responsible for the routes and the safety briefings prior to any organized ride. Uh, we also have a director of events. Uh, we have a sergeant at arms who's, mm -hmm. who's uh, responsible for enforcing the good order mm -hmm. um, when we're out and about. We have a chaplain. Mm -hmm. um, and then we just have the, the, the other members who are um, on, on the committees, diff various committees. We had a Christmas committee or any, any type of events that um, we want to look at. We usually appoint committees mm -hmm. to oversee those. Okay. How is the relationship when I say relationship, what is the association between the chapter here and the national organization? Well, the national organization, uh, their charter is to also, obviously, to promote the legacy of the mm -hmm. Buffalo Soldiers through mentoring uh, our youth, um, also to educate, to go out to schools and uh, various uh, events and functions and either talk about uh, the Buffalo Soldiers or actually have presentations. Um, and a, pre a presentation could be something as simple as going to the school and parking the motorcycles and having the kids come and walk around and ask mm -hmm. questions. Because mm -hmm. one of the, one of the um, main things that is attractive just from on site are the numbers of motorcycles. Right. And people always find that very interesting to uh, see a large number of, of, uh, of people riding as a group mm -hmm. on motorcycles. So that's a, that's a good tool that you use to attract people in, in the sense that you're trying to get students interested mm -hmm. in, into the area that you're trying to then share information, yes. which is uh, achieving the education and the mentoring right. uh, process. That's a real good uh, tool that you use. Is there, uh, what, so what then would you say is the primary mission of the organization? I heard you say is to uh, promote uh, the legacy of uh, Buffalo Soldiers. So um, it, would you care to expound on how your mission uh, states that you should be doing that? We have, um, we're required to have at least two um, functions that are an outreach to a school. 
mm -hmm. uh, per year. Um, in addition to that, we also provide charitable uh, donations. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, donated a, uh, a check to the NAACP Scholarship Fund mm -hmm. Grateful um, to you. earlier this year. And uh, we also participate in community events uh, for security um, or just, just fundraisers to mm -hmm. raise money so that we can give back to the community when they, when they come out and, uh, and, and provide support. So it's kind of a mutual um, thing that we do. Uh, we go out and, and, and uh, promote in the community the legacy of the Buffalo Soldiers. We try to set the example um, through our conduct. Uh, and when people see that, they say, oh, you know what, that's not, you know, although that may seem like it's an intimidating brand mm -hmm. to be a motorcycle club wearing black leather vests and mm -hmm. so forth, um, we're not an outlaw motorcycle club. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's recognizing the community. So uh, that's, that's what we try to do hand in hand with the National, um, which has... Um, approximately 72 chapters across uh, the U.S. across the United States as well as uh, there are two uh, chapters internationally mm -hmm. there's one in Ontario and one in Nova Scotia mm -hmm. um, and we have a prospect chapter in Australia mm -hmm. actually as well so we it is international and that's excellent and so you're governed by a national board of we, directors? Right. We have a set of bylaws. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a set of national bylaws, but each chapter uh, mm -hmm. creates their own bylaws right. based on the what's national. in the national. Okay. All right. Um, the, the other question that I would have with respect to that is how uh, is there an aspiration for, say, some of the local members to move on up to be uh, the head of the national? Um, foster that yes uh, it's it's possible all of that is done by election because right. the, because a national um, is considered the council right they are the council um, I am the national webmaster by appointment okay. by the national president so I have mm -hmm. I have uh, in a, uh, that type of association with mm -hmm. a national um, I am a part of the council because of that position Right. So that's c congratulations then that we have Thank local you. in our local chapter then someone that is affiliated at the um, national level. And so you said that uh, you have different programs that you do within the community. Would you care to talk about what are some of the projects locally done here in Hawaii by the Buffalo Soldiers? The uh, some of the projects that we've done have been primarily fundraisers. Mm hmm in order that we may give back to the community. Okay. We've had things like fish fries, we've had car washes, several car washes. Uh, we've had, um, let's see, we had, uh, kind of slips my memory right now. Um, Does the, well let me ask you this while you're thinking of it. Does, aside from um, the two school projects that the national mandates, mm -hmm. uh, the National Council mandates, uh, is there any, some organizations have like a national charity project. Mm -hmm. And so if we are to understand this community organization, uh, we would probably put it in the category of education is your primary community service. Yes, uh, that, okay. that, that's our goal is to mm -hmm. primarily f to educate. Okay. To, to educate. All right. And so, go, go ahead. So we, we don't have a, a specific school that we have picked out or mandated yet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and in order to be fair, when we did our, when, uh, our uh, donation for the scholarship fund, mm -hmm. um, so that we wouldn't just pick one school and have others asking, well, what about us? Right, right. We donated it to the NAACP to disperse it as, right. as, as you deem needs. fit, right? Okay, all right. So, so we have not picked out one certain school okay. um, to, to do that with. And you would do that, do, you would do your school project, say, twice a year if you did it. Correct. Is there a target uh, age group that you all prefer to, uh, quote unquote, mentor with or work with? Is there any uh, specifics or is it up to the chapter as to, to what group of students 
they may have a desire. Right. I, I think it's, it would be both up to the chapter and to the school. Mm -hmm. uh, because obviously, when we talk about history, some of the very young kids mm -hmm. may not necessarily, they may not even have reached that level of education yet. Mm -hmm. where they're being taught U.S. history. Mm -hmm. So we can uh, entertain them with other things, like we, we like to dress like Buffalo mm -hmm. soldiers and have and, and, and the uniform, mm -hmm. um, which is interesting also. Okay. We, we try to emulate and uh, you know, try to be authentic right. as close as possible mm -hmm. um, to the actual Buffalo soldiers. Okay, that's good. So some of our audience out there that may be interested for Black History Month and for other cultural events can contact the Buffalo Soldiers Motorcycle Club here in Hawaii and you all in traditional Buffalo Soldier dress mm -hmm. could go to the schools or to other cultural events in helping the celebration and awareness. And I yes. think that's, that's excellent. Uh, I personally wasn't aware of that and I think that we get calls from time to time where people are asking about those types of individuals and groups that would be interested in portraying authentic dress or right. authentic periods of time. So that's good. One thing I, I just recall, we were asked uh, to be judges um, at a youth talent mm -hmm. uh, competition. Um, that's the other one I was trying to think of. Uh, okay. We went up to Schofield Barracks um, and we were uh, had to judge the talent competition. So I guess um, there was a shortage of judges and we were available. Um, okay. And happy to do it. <laughs> All right. No, you just as equally as qualified as others. Yes. Okay. And so, uh, also, let me let me talk a little bit about more with your community engagement. When you um, talk about uh, re reflecting on the the true Buffalo soldiers and how you've used the motorcycles and the motorcycle club to perpetuate that legacy. Mm. Um, why don't you take a moment and tell our audience about your experience with uh, interacting with some of the, the Buffalo Soldiers? Well, I've, I've been to um, several national events mm -hmm. um, where you see a myriad of different members mm -hmm. from all walks of life, from all backgrounds, um, and we don't discriminate. Mm -hmm. It's just if you have an interest, mm -hmm. then you are qualified to join. Right. Um, and some of my, I've met some very um, interesting people uh, during my travels. Um, what about like some of the, the historic uh, individuals? Like for ex example, your organization is perpetuating the legacy of Buffalo Soldiers. So what has been your experience with directly meeting Buffalo soldiers. Right. We're here in Hawaii. Uh, we were very fortunate to have uh, Lieutenant William Waddell, William right. H. Waddell IV. Mm -hmm. uh, may he rest in peace. Mm -hmm. He passed away in February uh, of 2008, mm -hmm. but not before we had an opportunity to be invited to his residence right. and uh, really um, listen to his story. Mm -hmm. about his experience as a Buffalo soldier, mm -hmm. as a living, actual cavalry Buffalo soldier. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very amazing. He's, he was a very wonderful person to talk to. Mm -hmm. He loved to talk story. Of course he did. <laughs> um, the, the, the history on that is he, he actually served on our board of directors at a point of time. Okay. Uh, and so I think that, the, well, let's talk about for a moment the difference. Does it make a difference when we have organizations like this in the community and they have some of those historic icons if the members have the opportunity to have audience with them? I yes. mean, did, you know, it, it, it really warms the heart if you have that opportunity and it substantiates your organization more. Yes, absolutely. For the members that did get an opportunity to meet uh, Dr. Waddell, mm -hmm. as he's more uh, more known by Dr. Waddell. Mm -hmm. um, those are the people in our organization that when they get asked about Buffalo Soldiers mm -hmm. have a real experience mm -hmm. and can truly talk about mm -hmm. the person that they met. Right. And um, that adds to what you have to say. Mm -hmm. It's not just something that you read. 
Right. Um, it's something you've actually experienced. Mm -hmm. And so that, that helped out a lot. And I think that his, uh, his firsthand account of what he went through as a Buffalo soldier and the difference that we recognize him for making, certainly you get a, per a part of that personal history. Right. And so, you know, one could say that riding your bike is a byproduct of carrying that history forward in time into future generations. That's true. And when we showed him our colors on the back of our vest, mm -hmm. you should have seen his smile. Oh, yes. He really yes. smiled when he saw that. <laughs> okay. And that's, yeah. you know, that's, that's good. Let's, let's uh, move a little bit and we talk about mm -hmm. legacies and uh, the need for us to perpetuate legacies. So um, the Buffalo Soldiers obviously was an African-American group. What is the impact that having the first African-American president had on the movement of your organization and the relevance of promoting uh, African-American history? Well, I think that President Obama uh, being the first African-American president had a profound effect. Mm -hmm. I think um, I predicted um, his win, mm -hmm. but after he won, we put up his official photograph in our clubhouse. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think there's anyone in the, in the club um, that could be more happier than uh, collectively mm -hmm. than we are. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's not just, he, he has not just um, affected our club, but it's, it's a national, an international, mm -hmm. global impact that he's had. Uh, so we're just a microcosm in the overall joy. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. And I think that, again, when we look at, and I'll just say, for example, men, and I think that the majority of your members are men. Uh, yes, the majority of the full members are okay. male. Yeah. Are, are men. And, when, and, and the difference, I think, that we've been challenged as a result of this transition nationally and globally, too, is that more men are stepping to the forefront as responsible citizens. Mm -hmm. And in particular, minority men are stepping to the forefront. Uh, has your organization seen uh, somewhat of a crisping or sharpness or more commitment on the part of the men? Yes, and particularly the young men. Mm -hmm. um, they've begun to realize that, you know, we have a black president now, an African-American president, who doesn't wear his pants down around his mm -hmm. waist or down around his bottom. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay to wear clothes that fit Mm -hmm. and behave in a manner that's respectable. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think it's had a, particularly among young men, mm -hmm. I think it's going to have a, it has had, a, had an effect. Um, Excellent. And, and that's one of the questions I think that we're continually dealing with is how has that changed caused change to move all the way down to different levels and I think that the celebration uh, a guarded celebration of mm, such right. is that you know we have a sense of hope and confidence about the future but we move forward in a cautious manner in a manner that says you know what I can be you know but that means now that I've got to to be more responsible, I've got to pay more attention to what I do, what I say. Mm. And so it goes back to what is the uh, message that you send with your motorcycle club. You know, we're here to move this nation forward on education about what the contributions of these Americans were and at a time when they weren't even regarded as full citizens. Correct. And we're going to do it without being an outlaw motorcycle club. And I think that's the message that we, we want to make sure that we play a role in helping your organization convey to this community, as well as commend you and the rest of your membership for, for taking that upright walk in the community. It does take the full village. And uh, I think that that's a superlative example that you use. Now, how long have you been the president? Um, I've been, 
Well, as the founder, I'm also the first president, mm -hmm. and our term is two years, mm -hmm. and I've been reelected once. Okay. So at the end of this term, uh, I will have been the president for four years. Okay. All right. Well, I tell you what, uh, we really do thank you for coming on the show, for uh, educating us today, and for giving us a little bit of an insight into a motorcycle club. It's not often that we get a chance to really sit down and talk with folks about what does your motorcycle club do. And, and while a lot of people know that they ride and that they show up for when it's uh, toys for tots and such, mm -hmm. a lot of them don't get a chance to learn about the intricacies. And so we appreciate you coming on the show and doing that. Well, thank you very okay. much, Alfonso. Right. Actually, I wanted to, um, on behalf of the Buffalo Soldiers Motorcycle Club, okay. I wanted to present you with a coin. Okay. Thank uh, you very much. I appreciate Buffalo that Buffalo Soldiers much. coin. Thank so, you. You're welcome. All right. And we thank you all for tuning in today also. This has been a very informative show today. And I hope that some of the topics that we discussed about how it is that we can take something that someone thinks is outlaw or something that someone thinks is not going to be a contributing member of our society and we find out that they are upright citizens that they're responsible contributors to our democratic process and that these members of our community are playing a crucial role in sustaining our neighborhoods without them and their efforts at helping us to achieve education and helping us to live in safe communities and helping us to bridge that gap where economically our children are suffering from disparities in education and other systemic problems. These are organizations that we vitally need in our communities. And I hope that you'll take the time when you see one of the Buffalo Soldiers riding again, you'll look at them with a different perspective and you'll take the time to thank them for the efforts that they're doing. Please tune in again next week for another edition of the NAACP Today Show. Aloha and mahalo.